Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. After avenging his mother and friends, young Shinshi is now wanted by the most powerful parasites in the world and will need to fight with all his might to survive and save the ones he loves. Today we will continue with the story of Parasite Part 2 from 2015. After going through a lot of lows on the human side, Detective Harama discovered that a psychopath named Yuragami apparently can identify the people who are hosts of the parasite and decides to use it to analyze all the main suspects. At the police station, one by one the people of interest are released when Yuragami says they are only human, however as soon as Shinshi enters the room the man immediately realizes that he is not fully human, but for some reason he tells the police that he is okay and the boy is released. As Shinshi is heading home, Miji begins to sense the presence of a parasite nearby and guides him to the place where they come across another one of the parasites savoring human flesh. With Shinshi more experienced, Miji just needs to distract the alien while the boy advances and manages to eliminate him by piercing his heart with just his hand, leaving even Miji himself impressed. As soon as they finish the quick fight, Shinshi goes to the body that the parasite was eating to regret not having arrived sooner, however while doing so he hears a strange sound nearby and starts looking, but can't find anything suspicious. That photographer is still after him. At the town hall, Mayor Hirakawa learns that another one of his own has been eliminated by Shinshi and thinks about getting revenge, but Ryoko insists on doing nothing and just waits until the boy calms down and stops attacking them. However, the other aliens disagree and ask Goto to decide, but as he is not present, they all follow Ryoko's orders and just leave him alone. On the street, a strange parasite named Mickey is doing his morning run until he finds a Yakuza office and starts laughing. Seeing this, one of the mobsters asks what he's laughing about, but Mickey doesn't even bother to answer and simply sinks the man's skull into the ground, and to complete his training, Mickey calmly enters the office and eliminates all eight mobsters. At a restaurant not far from there Ryoko meets the photographer Kuramori who wants to reveal Shinshi's photos to the police so that they can capture him and thus get the location of the others. However, as she knows that this will lead straight to her, Ryoko asks the photographer to wait a little longer and uses the fact that Shinshi is her former student as an excuse, saying that she doesn't want to give him up. After meeting Ryoko, Kuramori goes to the school to continue spying on the boy, but Shinshi notices his presence and lures him to a farther place to corner him. With Kuramori in possession of him, Shinshi takes him home to talk and discovers that Ryoko was the one who told the photographer that he is a parasite. To reciprocate in kind, Shinshi says that the prefecture has become the parasite's stronghold and that Ryoko is one of the leaders, as well as being the smartest among them all. Finally, Shinshi warns Kuramori to forget everything he knows and go about his normal life before he is eliminated by one of the parasites. But the first thing he does is go to the city hall to record an interview with the mayor and put a hidden recorder to spy on him, but as soon as he leaves one of the parasites finds the object and Hirakawa finally decides to override the orders of Ryoko and eliminate both the photographer and Shinshi and Miji. At school, Shinshi finishes his classes and starts walking back home together with Satomi, but while they are talking, Miji feels that they are being followed by five enemies at once. To prevent Satomi from getting hurt, Shinshi starts to walk away, but after some time running away he is finally found by Miki. But weren't they five parasites? Well, each of this guy's limbs is a different parasite, that is, he's an alien in each of his arms and each of his legs, and of course, his head. As they are running away from the enemy, Miji notices that his blows are quite incoordinated and decides to use this to his advantage. He then stretches up a tree to surprise him from behind and manages to rip off Miki's head with a single blow. After defeating the enemy, Shinshi and Miji prepare to pierce his heart to eliminate him once and for all. However, at that moment, a group of humans begins to approach and they have to flee to avoid being seen, a mistake they will surely regret. With its head vacant, the parasite that is in the right arm takes control of the body revealing to be Goto himself. It turns out that this overpower is a kind of Kakuzu cosplay, but each of the parasites can take control of the body by modifying the voice and even the personality. Back in control of his body, Goto orders Miki to go back to his right arm and the crazy head comes walking with its demonic paws until it reaches the body. At the same time, Kuramori is at home talking to his daughter when he realizes that he has to leave to go to the market and spend some time there. But when he returns he notices that some vehicles are around his building. Fearing for his daughter, the man starts to run desperate and when he arrives, he discovers that what he feared most happened, his only daughter was eliminated by the parasites. After the crime, Detective Harama begins to interrogate Kuramori, thinking he has some connection with the parasites, but the photographer is determined to take revenge on his own and takes advantage of the moment he is alone to escape the police station. Upon learning of what happened to Kuramori's daughter, Ryoko goes to the prefecture and confronts Hirakawa for disobeying her orders, 
and in addition to failing to eliminate the targets, he also took the life of an innocent child. Ryoko then goes to her room and starts playing with her son, letting motherhood blossom inside her, but as soon as she leaves the room she realizes that she is being chased by some parasites and lures them to the parking lot. As soon as they get close enough, the trio of aliens order Ryoko to stop and tell them that they were sent by Hirakawa to eliminate her, but the woman says that only three would never be able to destroy her, and so she reveals a part of her face that it's missing. At that moment, three pieces of parasites appear, piercing the enemy's hearts, eliminating the trio at once. These bizarre cottages throw themselves in Ryoko's face and transform into the missing parts of her face. After getting rid of the trio, Ryoko goes back to her son's room, but the only thing she finds in the crib is a note from Kuramori saying that he now has the child. At the police station, Detective Harama calls Kuramori trying to convince him to give his location so he can help him in his revenge, but the photographer refuses saying he will do it alone. After ending the call, Kuramori passes his location to Ryoko, who before going to him decides to call Shinchi for help. At the same time, the Japanese task force somehow manages to discover that the parasites are in the prefecture building and go with all their men there. As soon as they arrive at the place, the officers say that there is a sniper on top of the building and start organizing people to evacuate the place, but it's all an excuse to make everyone go through a type of x-ray that can distinguish the humans from the aliens. As soon as they detect a parasite, the police take it out of line and corner it between some buses, where one by one they are executed. Realizing that there's no way to escape, the aliens try to escape somewhere else so they don't go through the x-ray, but the police start a real hunt when they bring the Yurigami to serve as a portable scanner analyzing everyone in the place. With Yurigami's help, the police eliminate all the parasites in the prefecture, until they finally find Hirakawa who tries to convince the police that the parasites are necessary to maintain population control, but the police don't waste a second thinking and carry out hundreds of shots at him. But it was a mistake, despite being on the side of the parasites, Hirakawa was a human. After the cops eliminate the mayor, Goto appears in the room and as soon as the Yurigami confirms he's not a human the cops start shooting. Goto then uses the parasite in his left hand forming a kind of shield that stops all projectiles as if they were simple paper balls. Realizing that the power level of this parasite is totally different from anything he's ever seen, Yurigami starts to run away from the place unnoticed, which ends up saving him as all the officers are eliminated with extreme ease. When she arrives at the meeting point, Ryoko explains that she wasn't the one who ordered the elimination of Kuramori's daughter, but he ignores her and insists on causing her the same pain he is feeling. At that moment Shinchi finally arrives at the place and tries to convince the photographer to give up, but he can't either. As Ryoko approaches Kuramori, Detective Harama manages to track the photographer's location and finally arrives at the scene. Seeing the men, Kuramori tries to throw the boy from a considerable height, which ends up forcing Ryoko to use her tentacles to pierce the heart of the photographer who falls lifeless. With that, she finally manages to retrieve her son, but reveals that she is a parasite in front of everyone. Upon realizing that the woman is an alien, Detective Harama and his men draw their weapons and tell her not to move, but Ryoko disobeys and starts walking calmly towards Shinchi with her son finally in her arms. As the orders were ignored, Detective Harama shoots Ryoko right in the forehead, but she spits out the projectile like it was nothing and regenerates from the wound with her healing factor better than Wolverine's. Seeing that the woman continues advancing, the other officers also start shooting, but instead of attacking them Ryoko uses her hair to protect her son and calmly walks towards Shinchi while being hit by the dozens of bullets. Seeing this whole scene, Shinchi yells for the police to stop shooting saying that the boy in her lap is a human, and upon hearing this Detective Harama makes his men cease fire. Completely bloodied, Ryoko says that this is goodbye and that she learned a lot from humans. She then ends her speech by saying that she would like to have a mother and child life together with the boy, but as that won't be possible, she gives little Taki to Shinchi to raise him as a happy, healthy human child. Finally, Ryoko says that she was able to perform her greatest experiment, that of being a mother. And sensing that her goal has been completed, she falls to the ground already lifeless, with her body rotting in seconds. Shinchi then remembers his mother who was also protecting her son and starts to cry. At that moment Satomi finally arrives and both hug with Taki on their lap. After everyone recovers, a policewoman takes little Taki while Detective Harama calls Shinchi to testify, but at that time one of the officers receives the report about the operation at the town hall and informs the detective that the entire task force has been decimated by Goto. As soon as they arrive at the town hall, the men are greeted by the brutal parasite that hurls a human head in their direction as if it were nothing. Miji then tells Shinchi that this is the man they defeated the night before, but now much stronger and tells him to run away because he's scared. The boy then starts to run until he reaches the parking lot where Miji unlocks a car and they run away. 
At that moment Goto jumps from the top of the building and Harama starts shooting at him, but the villain manages to stop all the bullets and throws it back at the detective who loses his life instantly. Seeing what Goto is capable of, the police simply give up on eliminating him and make way for him to go after Shinshi. Goto then goes to the parking lot and steals a sports bike to chase his targets. In the car, Miji senses Goto approaching until he realizes that the distance between them is zero meters. At that moment Goto falls along with the bike on the roof of the car, and while Miji drives, Shinchi struggles to survive. But with all this absurd movement, they end up losing control of the car and have an accident that would be fatal if Miji didn't pull them back to the track. From above, Shinchi observes the burning car believing that Goto is gone, but Miji responds saying that he is still alive and that it will be much harder than that. Goto then comes out of the wreckage and starts to regenerate while Shinchi runs through the middle of the forest and prepares a kind of wooden spear to defend himself. Miji then hatches a plan and separates himself from Shinchi's body. As the Goto arrives at the trap's location, Miji tries to attack him from behind, but his attack is easily repelled by the parasite that turns around, giving Shinchi the opening to come out from behind the tree to stab him with his powerful wooden spear. But despite being distracted, the boss still manages to stop the boy's blow. Taking advantage of Gatu's distraction, Miji performs an attack that almost manages to knock him out, but it's not enough to make a deep cut and insists on attacking to try and finish him off, while the other four parasites parry all the blows, giving time for the attack. Goto put his head back in place. As his plan failed, Miji realizes he has no chance against him and orders Shinchi to flee, but the boy refuses to abandon him and just watches as Miji has his limbs ripped off one by one and is brutally defeated. With his main target unable to fight, Goto turns to eliminate Shinchi, but Miji uses the rest of his strength to distract him, giving the gap the boy needs to escape. But Goto finishes him right away. Completely lost, Shinchi starts running through the forest in the middle of the rain until he arrives in the abandoned sector of a nuclear power plant and finally finds shelter. Exhausted, Shinchi lies down and begins to hyperventilate until he receives a call from Satomi who finds him unconscious. While he is passed out, Satomi starts to bandage him up. In the morning, the young couple wake up and Shinchi notices that an eye has appeared in what's left of his arm, meaning Miji's cells are still inside him. But despite everything this is bad news, because the parasites manage to locate each other, that is, Goto knows where he is and it's a matter of time until they find him. At the power plant's access gate, an employee sees Goto entering and tries to stop him, but the man doesn't even have a chance to say anything and has his head ripped off by the parasite's tentacles. Seeing this, Shinchi says goodbye to Satomi and decides to face the boss once and for all. The boy then reveals his location and lures Goto to the nuclear waste sector where he tries to escape by hanging on to a gigantic claw that starts to move away, but Goto uses his powers to transform his legs into the paws of an impala and jumps for one. Gigantic height falling right on top of the claw. Even with his target practically defenseless and without an arm, Goto spares no effort to eliminate him and makes several attacks against him, but ends up cutting the claw cables by accident. On the ground, Shinchi sees a piece of rebar in the middle of the trash and in a last effort dodges the blows, picks up the object and slides in the greatest Neo Matrix style until he finally reaches Goto and pierces his chest with the rebar, but despite all his effort, Shinchi ended up missing the boss's heart and so he didn't suffer any considerable damage. To fight back, Goto launches an attack against Shinchi, but as soon as his tentacle touches the boy's severed limb, they start to merge until a part of the parasite stays with Goto and another part takes the form of Miji in the boy's arm. Finally back in action, the parasite says that it kept a part of its cells inside Goto himself and that all this time it has been damaging his nervous system. Also, Miji says that the rebar the boy used was filled with radioactive waste, causing Gatu's body to go out of control and melt until he becomes an extremely grotesque humanoid creature and finally explodes. But Goto is so powerful that even with its body destroyed, its heart is still beating and the parasite in its head is summoning the rest of its cells to rebuild itself. To end his agony once and for all, Shinchi slowly walks over to him and throws him into the flames of the garbage incinerator, making his victory over the most powerful parasite official. Sometime after the big final battle, Miji tells that the nuclear waste has also affected his molecular structure and that he will need to sleep until he restores all his cellular health, which can take years or even decades. Finally, Miji explains that with this Shinchi will finally have his right hand back and says goodbye to his best friend, not knowing if they will ever talk again. About a year after saying goodbye to Miji, Shinchi and Satomi go to visit little Taki, who isn't even that little anymore. After the visit, the couple goes for a walk and Satomi asks Shinchi to go to a store to buy ice cream, but Yuragami, who was watching them, takes the opportunity to kidnap the girl and take her hostage. Once she gets to where Satomi is supposed to be, 
Shinchi starts looking around and sees her being taken away by the lunatic. Knowing the Shinchi is coming after him, Yurigami takes Satomi to the top of a building where he coldly cuts a man's neck. When Shinchi arrives on the terrace, Yurigami tells him that since the day he saw him at the police station with Detective Harama, he has been obsessed with finding out what a real monster thinks of him. Despite the absurd psychopathy, Shinchi says that Yurigami is just a normal person and tries to reassure him, but Satomi interferes by calling him an imbecile and saying that she feels sorry for a monster like him. Upon being called a monster, Yurigami is filled with rage and starts approaching the edge slowly until he throws the girl from above. At that moment Shinchi starts running towards the two, knocks out Yurigami with a punch and tries to grab Satomi's hand, but sees her slipping from his fingers and falling off the building. Feeling guilty about the girl's end, Shinchi begins to remember everything that happened and regrets having lost everyone he loved. Then a quick flashback goes through his head, but Miji interrupts saying to pull Satomi before she ends up slipping for good. Miji woke up for a second just to save the girl and went back to sleep. Safe and sound, the young couple lie down on the terrace and Shinchi tells the girl that after he threw the dog in the trash, he regretted what he had done and buried him under a tree. And so ends the story of Parasite. But what about you, would you have the courage to face Goto? Do you think you could survive? So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.